Step 4. Reality. Previously, we considered all of the purification schemes and schedulings only for the ideal case. We didn't consider or include the effects of noise. But in real life, we have to consider photon loss. When photon loss happens, we cannot continue with our purification, simply because there are no bell pairs to purify. The gate errors that uh, um, are affecting our C0 gates inside a purification circuit also uh, play a major role in decreasing the final fidelity. The memory errors do as well. If we lose a photon or if we fail a purification, we have to wait. And all of those bell pairs that are waiting are losing their fidelity due to decoherence. Furthermore, we have to contend with measurement errors. Our apparatus, our detectors, our measurement um, devices are not perfect. Sometimes uh, they give us the wrong answer or the wrong parity information, which again um, decreases the fidelity of the final uh, of the output bell pair. So let's consider an example. And we're going to go back to our first schedule that, you, that we considered, the recurrent purification scheme. And again, we start with uh, four bell pairs. Here, um, we have our base bell pairs, which we purify and we succeed, and we get a new bell pair of fidelity F prime. But in this case here, we lose a photon, so we never actually distribute this bell pair, this base bell pair. We only have a single one. Therefore, we cannot continue with purification on that pair. So what happens? These two bell pairs, this uh, bell pair of fidelity uh, F base, and this purified bell pair of fidelity F prime, they have to wait. And while they are waiting, their fidelity is decreasing. And they have to wait until we manage to distribute um, a base bell pair, which then we can use um, with this pair in order to execute purification. So the fidelities previously that we considered to be constant, this F prime and F base, even when we had waiting time, in fact, they decrease. This F tilde prime is less than F prime. F tilde base is less than F base. And then, therefore, these new, probability, new uh, fidelities, F double prime and also F triple prime, will be uh, smaller, as if they were when there was no decoherence errors while waiting. Next, measurement errors. How do we model measurement errors? Well, how do we model uh, ideal measurement? Usually we consider a simple case of projective measurements. We have two projectors, which we call A0 and A1. A0 projects onto the zero state and A1 projects onto the one state. The probability that the outcome of our measurement is zero is given by this simple mathematical expression. It's just the expectation value of the projection operator with respect to our state or written in terms of the trace, is just the trace of A0 times the density matrix rho. And similarly for our probability of our measurement outcome being state 1. And the post-measurement state is given by this following. We apply the two projectors on our uh, initial state rho, and we renormalize by the probability uh, of obtaining that measurement outcome. So if we get the uh, uh, measurement outcome as zero, we apply A0 times rho times A0 renormalized by P0. And similarly, if we obtain the measurement outcome of one. Now, there are two methods of modeling measurement errors, and we're going to consider both of them. The first method is the following. We have some measurement error probability, and we're going to call it PM. And rather than applying the ideal uh, projection operators, A0 and A1, from the previous slide, we're going to apply the following projectors. We're going to call them F0 and F1. And now we, F0 is not projecting only onto the zero eigenspace. It's also, it has a chance to project onto the one eigenspace. So we write 1 minus PM times the projector A0 plus the measurement error PM times the projector A1. And similarly for the other uh, projector F1. With probability 1 minus PM, we are projecting onto the correct eigenspace given by A1. And with some error probability PM, we project onto the wrong eigenspace given by 0. 
The other method is that our uh, projectors are ideal, but our state is not. What we can do is we can apply the Pauli X channel to our state to obtain a new state F prime. And the probability that we apply the X flip is PM, while the probability that we leave the state untouched is one minus PM. And then we measure with ideal projectors. Now, both of these methods, they give you the same statistics, the same probabilities. So that the trace of F0 times rho for method one, so the uh, um, probability that we obtain outcome zero is given, is the same as for method two, where we measure the noisy state, but with ideal projectors. And it's given by the following. It's just one minus PM0 times P0. Here, P0 is the ideal measurement outcome probability for uh, obtaining state zero. And we also have some contribution from P1 due to uh, non-vanishing probability error PM. And similarly for uh, our outcome of one, which is given by this expression below F1 or A1. Now, what are the post-measurement states for these two different methods? And this is where the, these methods diverge. Method one will give you applying the following measurement uh, uh, operators. And this method can actually result in a superposition of zero and one. While the second method always results uh, in a single cat zero or a single cat one. This method in some cases uh, is important and we have to um, uh, take it into account and based on that, choose me which method is more suitable for our, either our simulation or calculation or modeling of a problem. But in the case of destructive measurements, which is the case uh, we consider in networking quite often, uh, since this, there are no post-measurement states, they are destroyed, both of these methods are the same because they give you the same probabilities of measurement outcomes. So it's up to you which uh, method you choose to uh, use. So we have seen that there's a whole plethora of losses and errors that we have to account for. And this makes the whole calculation of um, obtaining a final, uh, final fidelity or bell pair very difficult to compute analytically. That's why we have to resort to simulation, which we are going to do in the next step. See you there.